Welcome to Chris Evans Radio. We are back with little Dave and we have a great topic from someone who follows me on Instagram and who is a watcher and subscriber of the show. So, mm -hmm. you know, what I want to, where I want to start with Dave, I had this thought as I was finishing up my meal right before we got on was, you know, it, it's really interesting. I, I, I have almost like two sides to my Instagram that I was just randomly scrolling as I was eating. And it's, this like heavy, heavy, like science-based community. And then I have another group that's like all like what I would consider like meathead bodybuilders. And I, I think we're at this like very critical time that you and I have talked about where it's like, where do you go? Like, and so many people think they have to pick one or the other. And one of the things I think that always intrigued me about John, well, he was kind of somewhere in the middle. And I think he was always skewed a little bit more towards the meathead side, but you know, some people might say he's a little more skewed to the science side based upon some of the articles and things that he's wrote, written and wrote. And listen, I, I spent, I got to spend a ton of time with him and the dude was super, super smart. But I think what a lot of people don't realize unless they actually got in the gym and trained with him is none of that came into the gym with us. Like once we came in, you know, whether it was a elite or American barbell or a lifetime, like it, it or, uh, well, it was used to be a, it's not pros. Well, it's pros now. It used to be powerhouse. Like when we step in the gym, man, it's fucking rage time. And I don't know how you feel about this, but there's this community within us that's all about like knowledge and brain. And man, like you don't have, I had someone literally say to me two days ago, muscle doesn't mean intelligence. Muscle doesn't mean you know how to do it. And I was like, what? Like, that to me almost just, it, it makes me cringe. And it go, I go back to this example always. If you had, if you were, if your fucking sewer exploded tomorrow, would you hire someone with all the latest, greatest, up-to-date knowledge of, say, plumbing school? Or would you hire the motherfucker who's been doing it for 20 years? The decision is simple. <laughs> yeah. The dude who's been literally waist deep in shit for 20 years doing this job. That's who you're calling. You know, if you have a group of guys who've been doing landscaping their whole life, their hands are covered in calluses, or you have the kid who, hey, my dad used to be a landscaper and I've watched him do this job his whole life. I know the ins and outs of the business. I know how to cut grass, but I've never done it. it to me, it's that, it's that simple. And it, it almost kills me to see people listening to these literal kids or adults or I'm going to say professionals with all these fancy titles and letters after the name, but they don't have a muscle themselves, or I don't see them producing a lot of clients that have tons of muscle or gain tons of muscle. Do you? No. no. Yeah. It's one of those, it's, you need to have like, well, knowledge without experience is just bullshit. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, and, I mean the world functions on a lot of bullshit. Let's be real. Yeah, but the <laughs> saying what muscle is in knowledge is hilarious because it's like, um, I got my like. If you take someone who's two hundred and forty pounds versus someone who's one hundred and forty pounds, right? They both might know that how to build tissue, but one's done it. Correct. And there's a huge difference between, I mean, nowadays, like, if you read something or you watch it on YouTube, people are like, I've done that. But if they've never actually applied something, you know, if you don't know what 10 ounces of chicken and 400 grams of rice looks like six <laughs> times a day, how the fuck are you going to tell someone else to eat that? Yes. Agreed. Actually, I see it all the time. Like, if you, this might be a little bit mean, but, like, I've seen, like, on the coaching side of things, if you take someone who's like a bikini competitor and she coaches men, watch what happens when their food gets higher than she's ever eaten. Yep. Right? They start adding in really weird shit and their diet's like, why is there so much fluff in you? Mm -hmm. yep. It's because, honestly, that bikini competitor, that coach, it passed their, you see, we, we see this, right? They're like, you know, why are you eating like this? And it's like, instead of just more food, right? There's like, they start adding in extra cheat meals or random shit like that because the person who's coaching them has never actually gone further than that. So they, and they think they're like, wow, this is a lot of food yep. versus like the opposite. Like when I coach a bikini girl, I'm always like, fuck, that's no food at all. 
even though I have them eating 2,700 calories. You know, I'm like, fuck, they're starving. And like, well, that's actually a good amount of food for a 120 pound girl. That's a lot of food, actually. Right. Yep. You know, versus so like the aspect of that. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. I mean, it kind of goes back to me. It, It's I, I'm not saying you have to have been through absolutely everything, but it helps a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I've never been 300 pounds. But I've coached guys who are 300 pounds. Yeah. I'm not afraid to extrapolate that data. But I will say on the flip side, I got to work under John who said, hey, Chris, like, here's all my freaks are eating. And I got to see that written out on a on a spreadsheet. I'm like, okay, yeah. like, that's what goes in. That's how many calories they're eating. That's what they're doing. That's what their exercise looks like. That's how much cardio they're doing. That's how much supplements they use, fill in the blank. So I got to peek behind that curtain so that now when I coach dudes with that much muscle, it's just it's a little bit it's it's more food, yeah. Now on the on the flip side, like I think it's it's always interesting to try to look from their perspective and think they're like, oh, we read it in a textbook. It's in seven studies. It has to be right. And then you and I both know it can look perfect on paper, but when you start applying it, the ability to pivot when needed is the magic. I mean, that's what I always tell you. Yeah. <laughs> well, very true. Well, it's construction worker reference but i can't tell you how many times when we're building houses we get plans from engineers mm -hmm. fucking geniuses these guys make tons of fucking money right and they've got degrees up their ass yep. and they give us something that's fucking impossible yeah be like this this doesn't fucking work mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yep. like it looks really really fucking good on paper but then you go to build it you're like um this doesn't work yep you know, I just saw an example of this online two days ago. A really smart coach who is wildly published and God, that hundreds of thousands of followers posted his shoulder workout. It was a shoulder press, two sets in the four to six rep range, two sets. It was side laterals in the six to eight rep range. And it was one set of rear delts in the four to eight range. And that was his chest, shoulder workout. Okay. I've yet, this dude has literally no shoulders. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sorry. Back when I thought my shoulders were garbage, they were still better than what he has now. But he's selling ebooks by the fucking millions. How does that make sense to me? It, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's wild that he speaks from a place of authority. And because he has 14 pub med studies to back up his research. Yet, n listen, the dude goes in the gym and trains his balls off, but yet where's the muscle? Yeah. And I know what he'll say. I, Chris, we don't use the drugs that you guys do. Chris, I don't eat like you guys do. As a way to, like, shove down the truth. And he actually makes fun of meatheads actively. Yeah. Because he's like, oh, more bro science. Well, that's weird. I have, shit, on my roster right now, 46 dudes with better shoulders than you. Mm -hmm. And you're the expert. We're the amateurs. We're the idiots, right? Yep. <laughs> Guess what we do? Train shoulders in the 20 to 30 rep range, all rear and side laterals. We might shoulder press once a week. And even then, it's above fucking four to six reps. Yeah. I'm never going to ask you to do a four to, rep, six, four to six reps of anything. Yeah. Well, especially shoulders. Like, you, the, the, the your ability to keep tension in your shoulders is gone. Yes. In that rep range. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Go try it. Go put 315 on a barbell and overhead press it. Like, yeah. yep. you know, and I, on a Smith or whatever, so you're stable. Right. You're going to feel none of that in your shoulders. Oh, fuck. No. Or, you're just going to be like, wow, this was painful. Yeah, or imagine trying My to kick, hurt. Yeah, right. <laughs> imagine trying to kick up dumbbells heavy enough for four to six reps on dumbbell shoulder press. I mean, you're handling the what, 150s. Man, it's yeah. more work. Get them to here. Or get or listen, not getting your shoulder blown off by me handing you one. Yeah. Or risk reward is just not there. Okay, cool. So yeah. now you're gonna send a hammer strength, press it off the pins. Okay, got it. You're gonna use a Smith machine, cool. But at the end of the day, like you um, it, it goes back to this in my mind. Those people are literally stealing from the young and making them waste some of the most valuable years of their growth reading your garbage. 
and, and, it, and it honestly it just literally enrages me right because they, they're like oh chris doesn't have the degrees he doesn't have there's nothing he has anecdotal evidence like, like it's a bad thing <laughs> right <laughs> i mean for fuck's sake <laughs> I, I, one thing I always love pointing about, like studies are all amazing too. Right. Like I'm all for like people learning about what builds muscle and everything, mm -hmm. but there's a huge difference between like an untrained college kid and someone who's been lifting weights for 20 years. Yes. Agreed. Like, yeah, muscle is still there, but like also like maybe you're seeing more growth in that four to six rep range just because it's difficult. Right. Yeah. You know? Not because it's you're getting some stimulus from just the sheer amount of difficulty. You're not actually localizing growth. Yes. Like I wonder how much growth just happened in like tricep trap versus right. shoulder. Yep. Because I can tell you this: anyone who's ever came to town and trained shoulders with me, they have their face fucking blown off. Yeah. If they haven't ever trained like I have with shoulders. They're like, what in the absolute fuck? Like, what is this set of thirty on reverse peg deck? And then they stand up and like, oh man, like my shoulders have never been like they can't even touch their head. I'm like, yeah, you train shoulders for probably the first time in your life. <laughs> Wait, we aren't gonna shoulder press? Do you feel like you need it? No. Cool. <laughs> I, oh my goodness. You know how you actually just added a shoulder press to the end of the chest and shoulder day of mine? Yes, yeah. yeah. The, I have a I never tell Zach what's on the menu. Oh, I was yeah. just like leading. And then he's like, wait, what? <laughs> and he's like, we're going to be able to do like a, at top the plate here. And I was like, yeah, we're pretty fucked up right now. That's the point. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> you told me that rear delt shit that I gave you was what? How many minutes? Three minutes and 45 seconds. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Embrace that. For, like, for 100 reps. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. So I want you guys to embrace this, right? So this professional was recommending four to eight reps for adults. I made you do a set of a hundred. Just think about that in terms of time under tension. Do that for a year and see whose rear delts are better. Oh, wait, that anecdotal shit don't work, right? Like, oh, I'm sorry, that, Chris, dumb meathead again. Like, <laughs> I don't understand. If I took your photos from two years ago and put them like, right side by side of now, that's all the evidence I ever need. <laughs> yeah. Because to me, unlike them, I think your food is a constant, your supplements a constant, and your and your sleep is a constant. I don't think any of those things are going to change. They're all hundred percent. So where can I get the most growth out of you, or most way to be able to track your progress? To me, that's training. Yep. So and it's the biggest variable you can you can fuck around with too. I mean, like, yep. cool. Once you're getting your sleep, like, what else are you going to do? You're going to like, what are you going to change <laughs> if, it, if it's there? <laughs> like, <Right>. like, <laughs> you know, like, not Touch much you can do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get like a, a chamber, hyperbolic chamber, start sleeping at a higher altitude. You know, because it goes back to this, right? Like, I give you a plan and you find ways to make it harder. And I try to create plans for holes in your physique without getting you injured. It, it's mm -hmm. literally as simple as that. I look at your photos and think, okay, we need more meat here, 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 and here. Okay, got it. How can I create an exercise, an order of exercise that makes him grow without getting injured? And then I say, all right, do this. What does it feel like? Chris, this feels great. This feels great. This needs to be adjusted. I don't like it this here. Got it. Adjust. And you go right again because back and forth, just like that. That's how progress is made, gentlemen, or ladies, the three women who watch this. Um, that's a joke. <laughs> um, <laughs> Listen, before I get off this tirade, like, I really just encourage you all out there to think about things logically. And just because someone uses big words and has studies to back them up, if they don't produce results personally or for clients, you have to question it. I'm not saying they're wrong. You just have to wonder why it's not working. Yeah. And it's why I will always go back. I think about the, the three coaches that I had that we spoke about last week, there is no doubt when you cruise Shelby Starnes' page that he knows how to get people shredded. Okay, cool. That's why I hired him. Next, Matt. Go look at all the people he's previously worked with, including himself. Crazy. Go look at John. 
and every pro and top amateur he's turned pro or himself, there's no doubt that dude knows how to grow muscle on people as well as himself. And he knows how to get absolutely inside out peeled. Yep. That's why I worked with all three of those men. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. They knew how to produce results. So I wanted to learn. If I didn't give you progress, you would have fired me a long time ago. Oh yeah. Why, why not? Like you're paying me for a reason. It's to get you bigger and better. If that wasn't happening, you'd have to say, Chris, I've enjoyed our time together, but it's time to move on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just the truth. Yeah, uh, 100%. Yeah, you know, and that also applies to me doing the work. Yes, yes. I can't tell you how many times you get someone, you give them a plan, and they don't follow it. And they're like, this plan doesn't work. It's like, you never even tried the plan. Yep. You know, like, whose fault is that? You know, it's really, really interesting. I just had an update two days ago where someone sent me their diet and I went through it and I was like, all right, tell me, talk to me about your compliance. And they told me and out of 35 meals, they were eating 20 to 25 of them. Yeah. But they were complaining about being hungry. L logically, that doesn't make sense to me. If, if I'm having you on a meal plan of eating your 42 meals and you ate 45, I would say, okay, logically he's hungry. <laughs> yeah. Or you said, Chris, I ate my 42 meals. And then I added a box of cereal to each one, you know, fill in the blank. If you're starving, supposedly, but you aren't eating all your meals, like that doesn't compute to me. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> no, that's, that, that's way backwards. Right. Because. I can't imagine walking around hungry and leaving 10 meals on the table. <laughs> right. Like, did you forget them at home? Did you? <laughs> right. So you just forget to make, you didn't have time to make them. So you just skipped them. Correct. So in my that mind, one, that one drives me up a wall. It's like, <laughs> go to open your phone, order Instacart. Yes. Yeah. Hell, like if you don't have food with you, go to a fucking gas station and find something gets close to your macros don't just fucking miss it no like worst case scenario like go to mcdonald's order two chicken sandwiches yeah. get the chicken part of it and eat your carbs out of bread correct or the like, fruit box. easy you know yeah exactly like you know just missing it is like did you just you just gave up like no. something bad happened you like you just froze and you know, just like, you're like, oh, good, I can't eat now. I'm going to just, like, Jesus, okay. like, yeah. that's, that's what you said about pivoting. It's like, yes. life is not, you never know what's going to happen with life, but you, the, your experience and what you do with things is how you progress. Oh, yeah. Easy. Easy. I mean, I, I try to think about this logically, right? If someone dropped me off an airport in a town and I didn't have any food because it all went bad or already ate it all. I'm going to look for like a Logan's or an Outback Steakhouse and I'm going to order three chicken breasts, a bunch of potatoes and two steaks. And I'm going to go to a Target and I'm going to buy me a jug of protein powder and rice cakes and oatmeal and a food scale. Mm -hmm. That's going to cover me for the day, minimum for the rest of my day. Like, yeah, they, I, I it, it's, just, it's literally as simple as that. Um, and I'm sure you can go to the cold section of the Target or Walmart and find you hard boiled eggs. Easy. Look at the back. It's got the nutrition label. And I'm going to get close if I'm in the all season. Like, yeah, it's really not that challenging in, in my mind. But it, it's always one of those things. Like, I, I, I'll tell another quick story. I had a client who was traveling and they were like, well, I probably won't be able to work out because I don't know any gyms around there. I did a quick Google search and found five in them in a matter of seconds. Here you go. <laughs> like, <laughs> it may not be perfect. Like, I can't tell. Like, there's been times I've gotten to the gym and I'm like, cool. They Dumbbells go to 80, and oh, cool, there's a barbell. There's a Smith machine. Yep. I can figure something out. Yes. Yes. I, it, I believe in my heart, like you and I could go in a hotel gym with dumbbells to say 30s in a cable stack with two attachments and have a hell of a shoulder and arm day. Oh, yeah. Is it exactly what we would do if we had access to your gym or mine? No, but we could get it done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's, it, there's something about, I don't know. We, we'll, we'd we walk outside in the fucking snow or rain if we had to, like, yeah. to do cardio. Just, listen, check those fucking boxes and get them as close to perfect as possible, and we can always pivot after that. Like, yeah. 
<sighs> yeah. All right. Yeah, well, I think we're good there. <laughs> right. All right. Um, viewer question. And of course, I didn't have it. I thought I had it pulled up and it disappeared from my phone. All right, here we go. So the, the guy's name, and I can't, I know what his Instagram handle is. It's scall22. So we appreciate your question. He said he watches the show. Um, all right. So I'm just going to read your question here. He said he started out at 288 pounds. Works with a coach and a nutrition plan. Um, things are growing great. He's down to 242. So what's that? 46 pounds? Yeah. At eight pounds of muscle gain since November. So incredible. That um, solid. Yeah. Uh, he's on, I don't know the medical term here. It's the semi, it's the semi-glutide essentially. And mm -hmm. he has a very small appetite. He said he eats at the times he's told before and after lifting, tries to maximize all food efforts. I would love for you all to talk about this with Dave on one of your episodes. Um, let's see. What else is there? I think he asked me more. He said, with the limited amount of food I take in, what, when, and how should I eat to maximize muscle growth? So essentially, what he's saying is he has a small appetite. He's on a medication that reduces appetite, and yet he's trying to gain muscle and burn fat. All right, Dave, you go first. <laughs> well, I, obviously, the the nice thing, the easiest thing would be to do is just drop the drugs, and yes. you know, hope, I mean, <laughs> and then your appetite comes back, right? Um, when it comes to like your nutrition, pre workout, post workout are always going to be super important. Yes, pre workout agree. for sure. Like you're definitely going to want a good amount of your carbs there. I'd rather have my carbs. Pre lift than post lift if they were going to be if that was an option if they're that low would I only have that many carbs yeah but I mean like where you're sitting at you're probably not zero carb I would hope you not. know yeah and you know the making sure those two meals are honestly probably one of the most important agreed but it's not like the other four meals of the day or whatever number of meals you have aren't going to be important because they all lead into your performance of the next day. Yes. And that's why we eat, why we do. We're not, we eat completely to main, maintain our performance because our performance is what we, well, we are what we do. Right. And so if I go in and I press the one fifties for 10, my physique is going to resemble that. If I start eating so low calories, what I can't perform that anymore, and I decide to do the one hundreds for eight, like what do you think is going to happen to my muscle? Right? Why would it? Why would it matter? Why would my body want or care to have muscles what could do one hundred and fifty if I'm only doing one hundred? Correct. You know, so that's where and making sure you have the ability to do that is probably the biggest aspect yep. of nutrition. I can't remember which of the Jay Cutler DVDs he said this, but it always stuck with me. And he said, my performance today dictates the meals I ate yesterday. And that was forever burned in my kid as a head as a, as a kid, right? Like, oh shit. Like, so how I perform in the gym on Friday, it's all about how I eat on Thursday and hydrate yep. and sleep. And to me, that always makes sense. And why I always, you know, you and I go back to the house reference of built, placing the perfect brick, because technically the brick's already placed once we've entered the gym. Yeah. For that day. Yep. And most don't realize that, which it never makes sense to me, right? I've always thought about, I've never, I don't know if you've thought about this. Most people don't follow their meal plans on Saturday and Sunday, and they place their weakest body part on Monday. Yep logically that's horrible so you're gonna yep. go in there with all this like junk nutrition sleeping in too late missing water and then you're gonna train your most lagging body part maybe that's why it's lagging because mm -hmm. then they're like oh it's monday back on my plan then we're gonna hit a strong body part on tuesday okay maybe that's why it's attributing to being strong because your monday's nutrition was fucking flawless and then what do you do again you'll eat all your meals through training on friday and listen i you can tell i've worked with a lot of people right then after Friday's workout, man, you might as well go to your girlfriend or wife wants to go out and you want to drink, you want to have a good time, you want to stay up late, then you're going to sleep in on Saturday. You're going to probably eat five meals and you're going to justify eating a pizza at nice to catch up on the calories you missed. 
And then on mm-hmm. Sunday, you're going to repeat that shit. You're like, man, it's lazy. It's Sunday. It's off. I don't do jack shit. I'm going to sleep in. I'm going to chill. Well, guess what? Now my girlfriend wants to go eat breakfast, and I'm going to eat a fuckload of calories. I'm going to be full till the nighttime. You're like, oh, my God. I've only eaten two meals, and it's 6 o'clock. Well, I better. I got I to gotta get those calories in. So what do you do? You order fucking five guys, have it shipped to the house, and eat ice cream until you can't see straight. You think you're going to have a good session on Monday? You know you're going to feel like fucking death. Yeah. Like, ugh. Look how I just ran that down. Dear God. Some yeah. of them, like rip people's face Most off. Most accurate rant ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, if we break all of that down into the most simplistic form, it's why I always tell people, like, if you do five out of seven days, that's why your performance and your in your progress is dog shit. So that's, yeah. that's step one. But but reining us back in on the topic of well, let's talk first about what that drug is going to do to you. Not only psychologically, it's going to trigger your brain to say you're full. So that's the start. Step one. Step two, it's going to decrease like food turnover rate. It, oh, I'm about to sound really smart here. It's going to decrease gastric empathy. So that means that food's going to sit in your stomach like a rock. In what world do I want to slow that process down? And this is what you and I talked about before the show started. But I will share this exact same thought process I had with you. Everything you and I do tries to increase food turnover rate. We take a glucose disposal aid. We take insulin. We take growth hormone. Weird. All that's going to do is make us utilize food more efficiently. We take gear. Guess what that does? Increases protein synthesis. All that's geared towards food in, food grow, food out. But yet you're on a supplement either by your doctor or your own hand, your coach. We obviously don't know which. That's literally doing the opposite. It's saying, hey, all the food you ingest, we're going to set that shit in your stomach and let it hang out. And then on top of that, I'm going to trigger your brain to think you're not hungry. In what world does that make any sense? I mean, if I'm trying to say, hey, Dave, I want you to grow and look as freaky as possible. I want that food in and out. Why? So you can eat again in two and a half hours or two yeah. hours, three hours, you know, whenever your time window is. That's bodybuilding. So that drug is actually counterintuitive. And I know what people say, like, oh, Chris, like, we're going to use that in a prep. And the example you gave was what happens when I have to do a high day? Because talk us through that. If I gave you a thousand grams of carbs and you don't want to eat, what that's going to be like? <laughs> well, it's definitely not going to be a fun day. No. You know? And then also, if it's slowing down gastric emptying, like, you're just, it's going to alter your performance. Yes. You know, what happens yep. when you eat a big meal and then go to the gym and it's still sitting in you? Mm-hmm. Yep. So I would actually think that you, speaking to the guy in the example, he's achieving progress despite that drug, not because of it. Yeah. And I think as you and I said, like, God forbid you're hungry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I honestly your example, think... more, more bodybuilding shit, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Well, it's one of those things, like, if you're trying to diet, like, probably should be hungry. Yes. You know? Like, yeah. it's part of the game. Like, if you're not hungry and you're dieting, something's wrong with you. Agreed. Yes. You know? Or you're not dieting. Yep. You know? And it's like, I mean, you, there is some merit to that drug, right? Like, yes. yes. He's down He's down 40 pounds. Mm-hmm. And maybe that helps him get through that start point. Right but now he has, now you're going to have habits formed, right? Going to the gym regularly. That's just that you're going to be doing those things without like actively thinking about, yes. you know, it's a more of a habitual thing. And now it might just be the time to just like drop that. Cause I mean, as all drugs go, they're temporary. Right. You know, we're not, we don't look like we are, because we don't run trend year round. Yes. Yes. I, I wouldn't have I, I, three in the all season. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. It's like, yeah, exactly. Why, 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 why would we use, yeah, like T three in the off season? It's like, what's the point? Yes. You know, I, I, like I have a very functioning pancreas, and and you know, it's like I don't need to use insulin all the time. Right. Right. Yes. Right. Correct. You know, I think part of the reason my dieting style works very well, if you follow the plan, is I get you to the point where. I, you could probably eat three meals at once, but we don't. And your body becomes hyper, hyper efficient at processing food. Yep. You know, 
because we found the foods that work for your digestion. We found the foods that are palatable to you. And then that way I can push your body fat low, low, low. And then, you know, guess what? We're a little flat here. All right, cool. Let's bump your carbs up a little bit. Let's see what it does. And then guess what? You come back and say, Chris, I'm down two more pounds and you increase my carbs by 400. Awesome. Increase it by 600 tomorrow. Yeah. Break even. Cool. Let's go two days low again. Let's push them to 800 the next three days. Yeah. Oh, weird. Next thing you know, you're steadily getting leaner, but now your muscles just volumizing. As opposed to what I'm seeing a lot of, and, and to me, this goes back to they're following science, right? Because science will tell you if I take your calories south and your cardio north, you have to lose body fat. You have to. It, it's an equation. Less food in, more output. You got to burn fat. But they're taking the nuance out of they're forgetting that like, oh, man, you just stalled the fuck out of his metabolism. And if I don't give him something to boost it, it then you're going to have to throw a bunch of T3 and Clint at it. Okay, cool. Well, what happens when you top that shit out at 150 micrograms? I'm not going to do that, but there are people who do. Awesome. Now you're not still getting results and he's eating a thousand calories a day and doing three hours of cardio and yet he doesn't have fully dug out glutes. Then what? Oh, shit. <laughs> Suddenly, that little science equation of yours stopped working. <laughs> yeah. And for someone who's done this for 20 fucking years and seen thousands of bodies at this point. Weird. Like, I, I think that's why I will always go back to what we talked about at the beginning of this is it takes patience, it takes a trained eye, and it takes experience. Mm -hmm. Yes, as you said, the semaglutide is good, or it was, let's start here, it's designed for diabetics, right? Yeah. It, it, if you aren't a diabetic, what's it going to do? It's going to say, hey, we're not hungry. We don't need to eat. Our stomach's upset. Of course, we're not going to eat if your stomach's upset. That's why it's working. Mm -hmm. If I threw you in the fucking wilderness and didn't let you eat for four days, you'd come back to me lighter. Shocker. <laughs> it doesn't mean that that's the right answer for fat loss. I think it's a quick answer. Mm -hmm. It's the immediate fucking result and requires the least amount of discomfort. Mm -hmm. Because it's way easier to shoot that shot on Monday and Wednesday and Friday than it is to drive by McDonald's and not get your number one combo with a large Coke and a McFlurry. Mm -hmm. If that's your habit. Cause Oh, my stomach's not hungry. Cool. My brain signals my body. I'm not hungry. I don't need to eat. I'm good. I'm yeah. going to energy drink and some coffee and call it a day. It's the whole premise behind fasting, right? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I think to answer that guy's question is you and I both mutually agree. Cut, cut the drug, man. It's it's done. It's 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 served its purpose. Yeah, and then just keep doing what you're doing. It's obviously working and working really well. Correct. Listen to your coach. Now, if your coach is telling you to take it, I, I would just have a conversation with him and say, yeah. "Bro, like this is fucking my appetite. Like, I'd rather not do long term damage to it." Yeah. Yeah, I'd also go look, do some research on what it's doing to your pituitary gland. Or your actual colon. Correct. You hear about the, there's that one lady who got hospitalized because she'd been on, she'd been taking cell Michael 2 for like over a year. Okay. And her large intestine became paralyzed. Oh, shit. And uh, so basically she's stuck with year-round diarrhea for the rest of her life. Oh, yeah, because her large intestine doesn't have the ability to pull water out of her food now. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it, it goes back to right. Like, if it's too good to be true, it probably is, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just it's the same thing. It's like, like I said, drugs are meant to be used, but not always. Yes. If I ran trend year round, I wouldn't have kidneys. No. Right, my kidneys would they would fucked off a long time ago. <laughs> Yes. You know, and then, whoa, whoa, unless I was on dialysis, I wouldn't be able to bodybuild. Yes. You know, and you probably wouldn't be doing both if you're on dialysis. You know, so it's like season, like they're in little, you know, cycles. It's not a forever thing. No, agreed. Just like yeah. caffeine, like yeah. you're not drinking coffee constantly. No, I would hope not. Yeah. 
I mean, so I think to him, the low hanging fruits cut that. Yeah. Um, but I, I think this kind of can bring us into a more broader topic to help more people is how to eat through around or get over having a small appetite. And to me, the number one thing is it's it's here. Yeah. I mean, I think you and I have both posted this multiple times at this point. Like you you have to treat that plate like a set. And you're not gonna get up. You have six sets a day or five or seven or however you however many your coach has you on. And you don't leave until every scrap is gone. It, yep. It, it's just a, it's an active decision. And as I said to you before you hit record, is if I had to get up and rake my plate off into the garbage. I literally am losing a failing and I, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I, yeah. It's a pride thing. It's also a money thing. Like not that I'm hurting for money, but I refuse to just throw dollars away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just not the quality. Yeah, wait, that, go ahead. Why would you waste your time making it to not finish it either? Yes. Like you Agreed. took the time to weigh it out, put it in the Tupperware and bring it with you. To not finish that is like comical. Okay. Like it's what you're supposed to be eating. It's not like you just brought like an entire fucking all of the fucking chicken in your fridge. Right. Right. It's what you're supposed to have. Like why why would you stop? You know, that's like just not doing the job. Yeah. I mean know? this also stems to me, right? Like, I don't know how you are. This is why I don't eat chips or Oreos, fill in the blank. Because I'm going to eat the whole fucking container, or if I'm eating Oreos, I'm eating a whole row. Oh, dude, they can't make <laughs> me. When it comes to foods in packages, <laughs> the serving size is one. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah. right. Like <laughs> as long as it's like if it's anything like that, pints of ice cream. Yes, Oreos. <laughs> the, my favorite thing is when they put like a, like a small bag of cookies. There's like five cookies in there. Right. Yeah. Like who's not finishing this? Agreed. <laughs> yes. Yes. And this is why you and I get along, right? <laughs> like, well, I'm not I'm not gonna bag it up with one cookie remaining. Like, yeah. fuck that. Like, just can't hand it to me. I'm gonna eat it. Like, yeah. So it, I think step one is there, right? Is identifying that what your goals are require you to finish the whole meal. And finish your entire plan. Once you come to terms with that and accept it, things get a lot easier. Yeah. Because if you, if, if it's like anything in life, right? If I'm always like, oh God, I gotta eat again. No, it's I get to eat again, and it's gonna make me bigger and one step closer to where I want to be in a year. Awesome. I don't care if that thing takes me an hour. I'm gonna do it. I used to sit down yeah. to the giant Pyrex dishes when when I was with Shelby of fucking turkey, rice, and olive oil. And it was with the three-cup Pyrex, right? I took it to work. It was my post-lift meal. And I'd get a big-ass spoon, and I'd shovel it in until it was finished. Yeah. And sometimes it would take an hour. Because yeah. it was it was uh, nine ounces of cooked turkey. It was 400 grams of rice and a tablespoon of oil. Yeah. And sometimes I might have an apple with it. That's a lot of fucking food. Yeah. <laughs> and you just, I just literally got a big spoon and shoveled it in. One bite after the other. Wash it down with water. Go again. Mouth get dry. Wash it down with water. Put some sugar free barbecue sauce on it. Put hot sauce on it. Didn't matter. Get it the fuck now. And then one day it just comes like, yeah, it's not too bad. Or one day comes and you start a contest prep and that comes down. <laughs> yeah. Some yeah, it's the, it's the outcome based decision making, which is like it goes over so many people's heads, but like we all do it for all kinds of things, like. Like, why do you go to work um, so I can get paid? Yes. You know what I mean? That's why you're there. Yep. You know? And then, other, you know, it's just one of those things. It's like, there's, if your your goal is to get bigger, put on muscle, just as the fucking gym is uncomfortable for a minute. Yes. So does your food have to be. Yep. Like, do you think you're going to train from not getting to an uncomfortable place? place? Right. Then why do you think your food would be any different? Yes. You know, and it's like, and once it becomes comfortable, you probably grew. Yes. And or on the flip side of that, dieting, right? Once it stops being uncomfortable, 
you need to take notes on what's happening. <laughs> Am I still losing weight? Yes. Right. You know? I, I'm trying to think. I, I know I've had your cream of rice serving to 130 grams before. It's been at 180 before. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I cheated you by 50. <laughs> I'll fucking serving. <laughs> it's, it's like bowl of games. You're like, <laughs> done. <laughs> Water. Um, oh, that's well, my favorite thing is I remember at the time the uh, the Ben uh, Uncle Ben's the boxes of cream of rice. Uh -huh, yes, they're four hundred and twenty five grams. Right. Yeah. So in a day, I remember I would legitimately make that meal and then make my first meal of the day, or, or it was my second meal of the day because I also had cream of rice there, and the whole box was gone. Right. Yeah. <laughs> It worked, right? <laughs> yeah, it got the job <laughs> Right. And you could spoon it in. And because I think at that time where I was giving you that much cream of rice, and my memory is right, I used to, and I, I know I know this is, because you and I used to joke about it on social media, I would make mine runny as hell, so I yeah. could literally just drink it. Yeah. Like, would just literally turn it up like a protein shake. I would, I would, here's, here's my post-lift meal. It was shake, it was that, and a banana. And I yeah. would drink the the shake. I would chug the cream of rice, and then I'd eat the banana. And it took less than three minutes. Yeah, and I just ingested like, God, what was that? Sixty grams of protein and probably two hundred fifty grams of carbs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I did it the other way. I would I would cook like a hundred and eighty grams of cream of rice, mm -hmm. but I'd add like such little liquid when it was done cooking. Oh, it right. weighed like two hundred grams. It was just dense. Yes, and it was like three bites. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, so I think that's kind of where we go next logically with this is ease of use, meaning finding things that you can get down simply. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I will always go back to, for me, ground meat and rice is super easy to shovel in with oil on top of it and sauce. Yep. So, like, ground beef and rice, um, I, for a long time, man, I would make like homemade mashed potatoes. So I would yeah. just boil my white potatoes and my the fat I had in that meal, I would just use Kerrygold butter and I'd put some almond milk in there and just mm -hmm. stir it up. And man, you could hammer two of those. Like I would do, I think it was like two and a half of those turkey cutlets that you could get at Kroger. Really yeah. good. Put them things on the grill. And then it's like you were having like Thanksgiving dinner and yep. you have your protein, your carbs, and your in the fat that came from the Kerrygold butter. And like, I don't know how you are. Like, that was really easy for me. Or, uh, like, beef and noodles, chicken and yep. noodles. Oh, oh, that's easy to get in. Yeah, like, super true. Also, like, uh, crock pot meat. Yes. And then just, like, take when you get it out of the crock pot, you just take a hand mixer and blunt. Um, that's a Michaela Acock trick. But yep. it just turns it into shredded chicken or shredded beef. Yes. And that on rice is just, you throw some barbecue sauce on that, and it's it's just easy to eat. So my pre-lift meal, anytime I, I would get like a lot of food on there and I, it was hard to get down, I would do that meat. I would go chicken, shredded like that with rice, honey, and barbecue sauce. Yeah. Super easy. Because you put that honey in there and the barbecue sauce and it makes it like this um, like really moist, like goopy shit that just goes in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Minimal chewing. Um, yeah. I don't know how you are, but like, you know, if you can take eggs and put it on Ezekiel bread to make a sandwich. Oh yeah. That's super easy. Easiest. Actually, that's, I've been doing that for my breakfast forever now. So I have the sourdough bread. Yeah. Yeah. But that yeah. happened. I uh two eggs French. I basically cooked the, the, the bread into the, and the eggs together. Mm -hmm. And then meat goes inside the sandwich and I just eat it as one thing. Yep. yep. And it's the easiest thing on the planet. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now I'm doing a pancake that's, Oats, banana, egg whites, and one scoop of protein powder, and then I'd cook it in coconut oil. Yeah, Shit. I did that that pancake for a while too. That used to be my go to mm -hmm. when I worked first thing in the morning mm -hmm. because I'd make it the night before. Oh yeah, and then throw it in a Ziploc baggie and then take it with me. Because yeah. the funny thing about that, right? You don't really add syrup to it, but like you throw a sweetener in it. Like when it's cooking, toss a uh, packet of Splenda on it. Yes. It's sweet and it tastes like, and the protein powder, if you throw that in there, it's also really good. Yes. But it's super easy to eat without utensils. 
Yes. Yep. So like I would just cut it into like a pie cut it, like uh, like a pizza, pizza. throw yeah. it in a Ziploc bag, and then on the on my drive to work, I legitly just have it on my passenger seat and it was gone in the 20 minutes it took me to get to work. Yep. And it, I made it the night before, so it didn't like fuck my morning up. And the great thing about that is so if you think about this, if you go from a big bowl of oatmeal and all those egg whites, it makes it so much easier to eat. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. And you and, it's all just one thing. Yes. And I think it's like here too, right? You're it's like, oh, I'm eating pancakes. This is fucking simple. Where if I set most people down to egg whites and oatmeal, they'd be like, Oh God, all this food again. Where I'm like, no, bro, you're eating you're eating a pancake. Done. Like, yeah, you know, I know. Well, I, know I think that's my my favorite thing about like, even just like with your meal prep, your macros, however that works, is you have the ability to control how you put it together. Yes, right. I think we've talked about, uh, you know, the what I think that was, was that you who had the guy and you had him post lift. He was eating uh, whey protein and a big bowl of uh, rice crispy cereal. Yep, and he texted you. He's like, "Dude, how are you eating all this cereal?" And he wasn't mixing them together; he's just popping it in dry. Right, right. It's like, God damn, that would suck. Yes, you know. But like, I mean, makes sense. That's the easiest thing on the planet. To eat if it's milk and cereal. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know? To me, logically, right? If if I want to minimize liquid and eat the least amount of food possible, I'm going to get me a vanilla milkshake protein shake. And dump it over Rice Krispies. Yep. And maybe cut some fruit in there. Strawberries. Yep. Bananas. If I, Listen, if I wanted to even eat less Rice Krispies, I'd just put honey on it. Or jam. Yep. Dear God, if you can't get that down, like, this isn't the sport for you. <laughs> no. no. Well, it's, it's funny, too, because, like, I've definitely been one to – I've blended my meals because I just didn't feel like eating – Right, but I'm also not going to be the guy who tells you like I missed the meal because I didn't feel like eating. Correct. Like that shit would that drives me up a wall when I hear it from other people. Oh yeah, and I'm not going to allow myself to miss a meal because of my feelings. No, no. You know, like there's a different story between missing a meal because you're having acid reflux or something like that is going on, Correct. but missing a meal just because you're not hungry and you don't feel like it. Yeah, that's just giving yourself an out. That's like doing a top set of squats and being like, oh, man, my uh, uh, my knees hurt. Mm-hmm. Oh, what? Yeah. You know, like, how many times have we heard that? You know, it's like, oh, I uh, actually uh, have a, you know, they're like shooting for an excuse because they don't want to do it. Yeah. yeah. So they're going to find the only reason why they can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of finding any reason why they can do it. Mm-hmm. Okay. That, in my opinion, is what separates successful people from non-successful people. Yep. You know? Yeah. I don't tell this story to sound hardcore, but I just want to paint a picture for you. So I woke up one morning, and Daxon had this, like, knot on his neck. It looked like a golf ball was on his neck. It was wild. So I ate my, I ate my pre-lift meal. I ate my first meal, and I ate my pre-lift meal, and then I went to the gym and trained. The moment I walked in the door... Andrew was like, the doctor called. They can see him right now, but we got to go. So, okay, cool. So I grabbed a bag of whey, a water bottle, and a sleeve of rice cakes, and we literally got in the car. Okay, so I'm sitting at three meals. What is that, three meals, four meals? Yes. So, yeah, I had pre – no, just first and second, and then post-lift. So I'm sitting at three meals. We go to the doctor. They send us to the emergency room. We are there literally all day. <laughs> yeah we get back home at 10 o'clock and i have literally eaten nothing now it's not something i'm proud of but i was terrified for his life because it looked it was getting worse and he was like actively looked like his body was shutting down and i was in a panic yeah. so we get home at 10 find out he's cool he's chill they had him on medication it was going it was starting to go away so i ate at 10 so now i'm at four meals and at 10 o'clock or 10 30 probably by the time i made it I literally laid my ass on the couch, set an alarm for 12 and an alarm for two, and I got up and ate again. And then I had to wake up at six to do cardio because I was in a, I, I was literally in a, I was starting a prep. Yeah. 
was that ideal? Absolutely not. But I knew I wasn't going to tell John I ate 40 out of 42 meals. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to report to him, hey, at about an eight-hour window of not eating, and then I got my meals in, but I didn't miss anything. Yeah. So he can work with that. Like, and as you said, I'm I'm simply not, when it's an option, I'm not going to miss and let's say we were end up having to be stuck at the hospital overnight. I, I, I would have probably asked Angel to sit with him while I came home and packed my three meals and two for the next day and came back to the hospital, ate him through the night, woke up, see how he was. I, if I had to walk laps around the hospital, do my cardio, that's what I would have done. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. I, I was fucking eight weeks into a contest prep when my mom died. I was sitting by her bed and she was like, Chris, where are your meals? And I was like, right here, mom, I got them. Literally, she died three like, three days later, and she was more concerned about her her my meals than she was her own damn life. Mm -hmm. Like, I, <laughs> I don't get it. Like, I, my stress was high, my emotions were high, but it didn't matter. There was still a mission. Yeah. Like, yeah, that that that. So she died on a Sunday, right? I had to stay with her because my dad needed a break. Stayed with her all Thursday night. I had two buddies coming in town to train legs with me on Friday. They never even knew she was dying. One, I wasn't going to talk about it because I still yeah. had hope. But we, they were there for a mission. I drove them motherfuckers into the damn dirt. I had no sleep. Mm -hmm. To me, they were like, man, that yeah. was brutal. Damn right. Listen, that, that day I was running on some fucking anger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, but it goes back to, right, like what you and I have been trying to teach is like, in those moments, feelings don't matter. It's result. And I was working with Shelby at the time. You best believe I wasn't going to report to him missing a damn fucking thing. Mm -hmm. God forbid, she was going to die either way, whether I hit my meals or I didn't. Yeah. And no one on that bodybuilding stage that I had to compete against gave a fuck. The judges didn't care. They didn't know. My competitors didn't know or didn't care. And I think that's what people don't understand, right? Like... They get so caught up in like their little small bubble and they think that like they're going to get some damn participation trophy in this shit. Yeah. Why? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everyone's life There's, is hard, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's just how you can manage it. I mean, I've always talked about that. What well, bodybuilding isn't really a 12 week. Like, it's obviously, we, I get pissed off when people talk about like a 12 week sport. But yeah. it's my lifestyle versus your lifestyle. Correct. Yep. And that's what this is, especially like the further you get into it. That's really what that this is. Yep. And the people who are doing the best, they're not messing up. That's yeah. the that's the secret. They're not they're not eating 30 out of 42 meals. No. You know, they don't miss meals because they didn't feel like it. You know, they'd probably would rather lose a finger than cheat on their diet. Oh, yeah. You know? I mean, how many times have we messaged each other and be like, hey, can you give me 15 more minutes? This meal's almost done. Yeah. It, yeah, I can. Finish your damn meal. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. If the you, amount of times like, we like, we have it on us, you know? Yeah. All right. If you had to eat one right now, I'd be like, go for it, man. I'll run this bitch. Like, it's not a big deal. Smash it. Get back right yeah. back to it. Like, yeah, I had a client who I've worked with this lady for a long time and she sent me these like really in-depth questions, like asking me like, Chris, like when you're angry, what do you do? When you're sad, what do you do? Like, you know, when you wake up and you don't feel like doing cardio, what do you do? And I was like, I don't think, I think, like, I think you're putting too much energy into this. I don't, it's just like brushing my teeth. It doesn't matter about my emotion. When it's time to train, it's time to train. The only time I wouldn't train is if my body wasn't ready for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. it and you notice I said body. I didn't say here. <laughs> because they're, they're, I'm sure you've had this too. Like you drive to the gym, you're deep in a prep, and you sit in your car for 20, 15, 20 minutes. And you're like, all right, I, I got to get I gotta get my mind right to go do what I need to do. Mm -hmm. Or I'm sure there's been days where you woke up and you're like, man, I'd I, I'd rather lay in the bed and chill than go do 30 minutes on the stairs or treadmill or bike. Yeah. But guess what? Honestly, 
that is the part of bodybuilding what keeps me basically honestly living is there's plenty of times where it's like i don't want to get out of bed but guess what i've got cardio to do yeah guess yep. what meal one happens right now yep. and bodybuilding some like honestly there's definitely points where i could be like bodybuilding definitely helped me get through these things because it gave me a reason to get out of bed mm -hmm. right i might be completely i'm probably wired absolutely different from everybody else there but the even just like when you don't feel like it doing something in that positive direction yes is probably going to lead you to more positive direction yes you know it's just like the matter of fact like waking up and fucking snoozing your alarm your day immediately is not going to get better no agreed you know like you just turned you just told yourself later mm -hmm. you know like you you broke a promise to yourself and yep. in bodybuilding like that's all where the bodybuilding is right like at the end of the day if i decided to cheat on my diet order five guys and slide two pints ice cream tonight you might be pissed but the real thing it really landed on me correct you yes. know what i mean that's where that's it's all going to be internally that and that's where so many people get so pissed off at bodybuilding is because they got pissed off at themselves for their own actions, you know? And that, that's a concept I think goes over so many people's minds, you know, just whoosh, because it's it's not bodybuilding you hate, you know, it's not that. Yeah. It's the actions you took and the or the actions you didn't take. Yes. Agreed. Like, I don't know how you are, but in a prep for me, I usually don't need an alarm. And when I wake up, I'm like, man, I cannot wait to fucking get on the scale and see how much progress I made. I can't yeah. wait to take my photos and be like, okay, this area got tired. This area got tired. And I'll get dressed, put my fucking vaso burn on, make the lemon water. And I'm like, fuck yeah. Like, I get to drink this because it tastes, and, you know, and you're in a prep. And I go, that tastes delicious, right? Like, mm -hmm. like that little warm lemon drink with the glutamine in it. Slam your fat fucking burners. You get on the treadmill. You start sweating your ass off. Like, man, I I'm fucking alive. Like, yeah, the mind is so dialed in to a singular focus, like th those. I, I I'm sure you're the same way as me. Like I, I get off on that shit, and I'm like, man, I finished cardio. It's five fucking thirty in the morning, and it's done. How many of you motherfuckers slept in? Like it makes me feel good, like to know, like, yep. man, this shit is done. Like now I got to do take all this effort and energy, apply that to my TVAs, my vacuums, my posing. Awesome. Now go eat meal one, two, three. Go go train. Like it's a cycle. And it's like, fuck yeah, like each each action item gets me closer to the end of where I want to achieve. Like, and as you said, so many people don't understand that and they view it like, oh, Chris or Dave's making me do all this cardio or, oh, like the amount of people I see complain about the Bulgarian split squat of death. Quit. Quit. Most of you motherfuckers complaining about it aren't doing it right. If you counted those ISO holds, I bet you it's less than five seconds. <laughs> oh, yeah. Those ranges of motion get shorter. The reps yep. get faster when it starts to burn. Like, I yep. watch it. We watch it. Like, the Bulgarian split squad of death, when John introduced me to it, I was like, oh, my God, this is fucking amazing. Like, mm -hmm. my whole body was shaking. When I finished one side, I was like, how in the fuck am I going to do this again? Like, and then you're like, oh, guess what, man? It's time to sack the fuck up and learn, and you got to get going. Like, catch your breath. Let's roll it again. Like, that, <laughs> that to me, I think that that's one of the reasons why, you know, you and I always will align is that feeling of al being alive comes to us in that moment. Yeah. Run from that shit, man. Like, when, when Chaz films that and I had him count, I was like, make it fucking awful. Yeah. Make it awful. 10 seconds for every hold. And it's like one, two. Like, it's not fucking fast. Like, breathe into that shit. Welcome it. Yeah. Like, that feeling is making my glutes be more dug out. It's going to give me better condition. It's going to make the muscle grow. Yeah. Why are you running? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, it's, you know, it's the first, I, the first thing your brain says is, oh, shit. Yeah. You know? But you get to you get to go back up there and be like, actually, right? You know, 
you can rewrite that narrative and tell your body you like this. Honestly, I think I've slightly like brainwashed myself because mm-hmm. over the years of training, I'll do something that's absolutely terrible. And I'll be that was fucking fun. Yeah. And then, like, so I, I know what I'm doing. I'm teaching myself like the truth. And like, honestly, it is fun. That's why we, I mean, that's why we do it, yes. you know? And it's, it always makes me laugh because like I, I'll train with someone randomly. Like, did you just say that was fun? Where I'm like, obviously in pain. I'm like, that's why I came here. Yeah. You know? Yep. Like, I didn't come here to dick around on my phone for an hour, you know? I can't remember if I've ever told you the story. So when I first started training people in person, like I'd lead them through like a widow maker set of squats. And I'd be like, how great did that feel? And they're like, didn't feel great at all. I'm like, your quads weren't on fire? Like your lungs weren't burning? They're like, yeah, they were. I'm like, it doesn't feel good to you? And they're like, no, man, it feels terrible. <laughs> I'm like, all right. I quickly learned that my thought process of, oh, man, the more it burns, the more it stings, the more I want to quit, the better it is for me. Like, that's not the way most people's brain works. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, oh, that's interesting. Like, you mean when the muscle feels like it wants to cramp? It does, that's not a good feeling to you? And they're like, no, which is always interesting. I think like when people use the newbie, they're like, man, you love that thing. Why? And I'm like, because every muscle fires maximally. Don't you like that feeling? It's cool as shit. And I'm like, ugh, no, this hurts. Okay, cool. We're different. Awesome. <laughs> you must hate muscle growth. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, you, I think, you know, you and I chase that like pump where it feels like it's going to rip your skin. Like, yeah. That, always to me will be like hell yeah like mission achieved like that that same sense of accomplishment that comes from like hitting the new weight on dumbbell press or squats or whatever like that's the same feeling i get with pump when my, when my muscle is like about to rip the skin hell yeah like yeah you know no different than when you when i get you to reach a new level of condition or you start to see striations where you've never seen them it's like god all that work in the all season of squeezing that fucking back gave me lower lat striations Awesome. I didn't have those two years ago. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, all, all, all of this to me wraps up quite simply into saying like everyone w- w- talks about wanting to be extraordinary, but also fitting in. Yeah. And those th- things do not go together. <laughs> no. There's a reason that most people think you and I are crazy in the gym. Mm hmm. It's because we're actually doing what's required for you and I to grow muscle tissue. Mm-hmm. If most people had to do that, they'd probably quit well before you and I will. So, yeah. I mean, I, th- I think the take homes of all of these messaging is use the drug to you no longer need it. Eat through hunger walls if that's what's required to grow. Yep. And on the flip side of that, like with training, if you want more muscle, you have to do things you've never done. <laughs> yep. More reps, more weight, more intensity. One one of yep. those three, maybe all three. <laughs> yep. No, Honestly, <laughs> yeah, finding that pain zone where it's going to be difficult is yep. the key. You know, and finding that with the intensity. Like, I find that so many people, like, like with the newbie, like you said, people are like, oh, this thing's amazing because they've never been to that intensity without it. Yeah. You know? If you can learn to take that intensity and drive it into every one of your workouts you do, right, you're going to grow really well. Yes. Yes. If that sensation that they're feeling in the muscle, they must not feel on a normal day of the week, you know? Mm-hmm. Which is why when we made those videos with it, I always say, ignore the, ignore the machine. Yeah. Ignore it. It's, it's, it's pointless to you unless you're using it. Yeah. Focus on what we're doing, our reps, our intensity, our speed, the rep tempo, where our sets go. That that's the important part. But I think sadly what goes over their head when they see it, they're like, oh well, they're the newbie. They that's not the same as what I do. And, and as I said in the video of you and I doing legs on it, is the newbie's fucking irrelevant. The only thing that's different about that session is we would have used more weight. Yeah. That's it. And I realize that if you've never been on it, you probably don't understand that. But I'm telling you, go watch any t- the videos of you and I training, and it's all the same. Put cords on us, don't put cords on us. The muscle's going until it dies. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter if we're dripping sweat from every orifice of our body, if somebody's throwing up, if someone's dry heaving, if someone's tired, doesn't matter. Go until we're done. 
Simple as that. Yep. All right, guys. Another great episode. Hope you learned something. Thank you for the questions. Bring, bring them on. We will always answer questions because that's what we do. Yeah. So we're, we're lifters of the people. <laughs> and then hopefully right. one day, you guys will start passing on what we're passing to you, which mm-hmm. is intensity over fucking everything. Not science. Science is cool. Intensity is better. End of story. <laughs>